We're going to take a look at rate of change. Our first question says Nathan counts the total of times each month that he is grumpy. Using the table below, find the rate of change between June and September. Write your answer as a decimal rounded to two decimal places or an integer. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind here. First, we're, we're only looking at June and September. So you can even ignore all of the other months in the chart. We're going to just be looking at between those two. So June, I know, is the sixth month, and he had 11 grumpy days. And September is the ninth month of the year, and he had 26 grumpy days. So when we talk about a rate of change, usually we're thinking about the rate or in other words, the slope between our two data points. So if I think about my table as being an XY table, my months would represent X and I'm gonna use the numbers instead of the name of the month and my grumpy days would represent Y. So finding my slope, I can use my slope formula, which means I'm gonna call my first point x1, y1, and my second point x2, y2. And I wanna find the change, which means I'm gonna subtract. Another way to think of that is when I set up my slope formula, it's the change in y over the change in x. So another way to write that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So essentially when we're setting up our slope formula here, we're saying what is the change in grumpy days, right? So our September grumpy days minus our June, which would be 26 minus 11. And then on the bottom of our fraction, we're saying, well, what was the change in months since it's per month? Okay, and September is the ninth month minus June is the sixth month. So noticing a couple things here. Notice that I set up my first point x1, y1 for June and x2, y2 for September. And I'm plugging them into my slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Notice the y's are on the top because the y's represent our rise, how much that is going to go up or down. And the x's represent our run. And then we just plug in our points and subtract. So the order is really important. We made sure to plug everything in the right spot. All right, and then from here, we're gonna subtract 26 minus 11 gives us 15. And then on the bottom, nine minus six gives us three. And of course, I can simplify fractions are division, the top divided by the bottom. So 15 divided by three gives us five. And that means his change was five grumpy days per month. Now guys, really quickly, since we, we already know our answer is five per month, but I just want you to take a look at this. Usually when we say slope of a line, we're looking at a constant rate of change. And I'm gonna delete my work here for just a second. But notice, this is not a constant rate of change. It goes from 11 down to 8, down to 6, way up to 26, and then up again to 32. So it's going up and down. So we really can't talk about this as slope of a line, but we can find the change between those two points for just specifically June and September, still using that formula. Connor's dad keeps track of how many times a month Connor forgets to do his chores. According to the table, what was the rate of change between May and June? Okay, so again, since we're talking about rate of change, we can find the slope between those two points. And again, be careful, our slope does not look like it would be consistent. We would not have a, a straight line here because it goes from 19 up to 45, back down to 16, down to 12, and all the way up to 26. But we're just going to be specifically looking at our two months they're talking about, May and June. 
Okay, well, May is the fifth month, June is the sixth. So since we want to use slope formula here, it's going to help to have the numbers for the months. Our first point, we always call x1, y1. It just means our first x and our first y. The second point we always call x2, y2, which just means our second x and our second y. And then we find the change, which means we're going to subtract. So the change in chores over the change in months. We're thinking of that in terms in our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so looking at our y columns, y2 is 26 minus y1 is 12. On the bottom, our change in months, June is the sixth month minus May is the fifth. And again, notice we picked those two months since that's what they told us in the question. And then we're going to subtract. On the top, we've got 26 minus 12. That's going to give us 14. On the bottom of the denominator, we have 6 minus 5, which is going to give us 1. And 14 divided by 1 is just 14. So the rate of change was 14 per month. Cross Product Industries keeps track of how many employees retire each month. According to the table, what was the rate of change between April and May? Okay, so in this table, I only care about April and May. So I'm looking at those first two rows. Remember, April is the fourth month of the year. May is the fifth. So if I set this up, since we're talking about, again, rate of change, which is always a keyword for slope, I'm going to find the slope between those two points. And again, notice our slope would not be consistent because it's going from 43 up to 47, back down to 21. So we don't have a linear set of information here, but we can find the slope between just these two data points. So setting up our slope formula, we know it's going to be y2 minus y1, our change in retirees, over x2 minus x1, which is going to be our change in months. And when we label our points, the first one is always x1 and y1. The second one is always x2 and y2. And then just plugging that information in, y2 minus y1 is going to say 47 minus 43 and x2 minus x1 is going to say 5 minus 4. And then from there we're going to subtract. 47 minus 43 leaves us with 4, 5 minus 4 leaves us with 1, and 4 over 1 simplifies to just 4. So our rate of change between April and May is four per month. A company keeps track of how many sick days are reported each month. According to the table, what was the rate of change between August and September? Write your answer as a decimal rounded to two places or in integer. Okay, so this time we're looking at between the months of August and September. So those are the last two rows in our chart. Now keeping in mind, August is the eighth month, September is the ninth, we can set up our rate of change or our slope formula between those two data points. So our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We always label our first point x1, y1, and our second point x2, y2. So when I plug this in, 
y2 is 30 minus y1 is 50. x2 is 9 minus x1 is 8. Okay, 30 minus 50 is going to give me negative 20. And 9 minus 8 gives me 1. Negative 20 divided by 1 is negative 20. Now, it's worth taking a second here to think about what that negative means. In our past couple problems, we had positive rate of change answers. So when your rate of change is positive, that would indicate an increase. This time, our rate of change is negative, which would indicate a decrease. And that makes sense if you look at what's going on in our table, because from August to September, the sick days dropped from 50 down to 30. So it was a decrease or a negative rate of change, ne negative 20 per month. Each year, Alyssa uses the table below to decide how many emergency candles to buy. She uses the rate of change between two years to find out how many candles she needs. What is the rate of change between 1996 and 1998? Okay, so we're looking at 1996 when she bought or used seven candles and 1998 when she used 18 candles. Okay, so we're gonna call our data points X1, Y1, and x2, y2. Okay, so when we set up our slope formula, it's gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So essentially that's telling us on the top, we're gonna subtract 18 minus seven, and on the bottom, we're gonna subtract 1998 minus 1996. Okay, so from 18 to 17, 18 minus seven, that gives us 11. And there's a two year difference, right? 1998 minus 1996 is a two year difference. And I have a fraction answer right now. They asked for us to write our answer as a decimal rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so let's, to turn this into a decimal, I'm gonna divide. 11 divided by two gives me 5.5. If Emily finds a table below in her wallet, what is the rate of change between 1991 and 1992. Write your answer as a decimal rounded to two decimal places or in integer. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we're looking at 1991 and 1992 in our table, right? Our first data point is X1, Y1, and our second data point is X2, Y2. And since they're asking us about the rate of change, rate of change is always a keyword for slope, so that's how we know to use our slope formula, y2 minus y1 is equal to, or I'm sorry, over x2 minus x1. And then we just sub in our numbers. So y2 was 11 minus y1 was 24 over x2 was 1992 minus x1 was 1991. So when we subtract 11 minus 24, that's gonna give us negative 13, and 1992 minus 1991 is a one year difference. And if we simplify that, we get negative 13. So again, remember a negative rate of change just means a decrease. So here, the electricity cost actually decreased between those two years or went down by $13 per year.